This is Dr. Talal Nakar. I'm going to talk about settings of high frequency oscillation. This is part two of this presentation. We already covered uh, the basics and the concept of high frequency oscillator in part one, and we are going to cover the evidence in the next presentation, which is the last part. This is the 36th presentation in the series of mechanical ventilation. You can review all the presentation on this channel. I will just remind you of this device, the high frequency oscillator, which is the sensor medics 3100P. So it's noisy device you can check the settings here we can decide the FIO2 here we can decide the main error pressure mean error pressure here we can decide the frequency the inspiratory time percentage and the delta pressure or the power or the amplitude and here we can decide the bias flow so again I repeat the settings uh, the bias flow we have to decide it, the mean error pressure the FIO2 the frequency, the amplitude, delta pressure, power, and the percentage of the inspiratory time. This is, uh, the, the, we are talking again about these devices or Medex 3100B. So again, the main airway pressure, we can decide from this knob, the bias flow, the delta pressure or the power, the inspiratory time, and the frequency. Here we can start the, the machine, here we can start the, um, uh, the oscillation. So for the bias flow, it should be adjusted around 40 liter per minute. For, this is for adult and for pediatric, it's around 20 liter per minute. We can increase it up to 60 liter per minute if there is circuit leak. Changing bias flow will change the, the mean error pressure and the delta pressure. So whenever you do any change in this machine, you have to check on the other settings. This is important here because if you change the main, mean error pressure, it might affect all of the settings, like the delta pressure. And same, same, same for the bias flow. If you change it, you affect the, the mean error pressure and the delta pressure. What about mean error pressure? It's adjusted directly. We start with the mean error pressure on conventional ventilation plus five centimeter of water, i.e. the patient already failed on uh, conventional ventilation, so this is rescue therapy for hypoxemia. He's on pressure control or volume control of, or whatever. His mean error pressure used to be 25, so now I will shift him to high frequency, so I will start with 30. 25 plus five, it should be 30. Titration, uh, it's up uh, by three centimeters of water every 30 minutes according to the target oxygenation. We should keep saturation more than 88 as all ERDS patients. We prefer to start with recruitment maneuver when we shift patient to high frequency. Uh, we can do the recruitment on the machine itself. We can stop the um, uh, oscillation and it's like CBAB circuit, so we give him, uh, the, we give the patient a 5 to 100 and CBAB or mean error pressure or of 40. We continue for 40 seconds and this time should the patient be uh, having good saturation, more than 90 and heart rate and blood pressure stable, i.e. vitals. When oxygenation improves, we have to win a 5 to first. When we reach 40%, we can start winning the mean error pressure. This study is just to validate our approach of targeting uh, mean air pressure based on the uh, oxygenation and maybe this is the best way we have. Regarding frequency, initial frequency is determined by the arterial BH immediately prior to starting high frequency oscillation ventilation. So if this patient is severely acidotic, BH less than 7.10, we can start with a Hertz of 3 or 4, 3.5. If it's 7.10 to 7.19, we start with 4. If it's moderate acidosis, 7.20 to 35, we can start with 5. If the patient is normal, be it's more than 7.35, we can start with 6. This is copy based from oscillate trial protocol. Um, it's not evidence-based, but it's a physiological start based on the, uh, 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 on the concept that when you increase the frequency, you decrease the CO2 removal. 
it should be adjusted according to BH and BACO2 so we can change the Hertz every 30 to 60 seconds by 1 Hertz this is we might repeat AVG after one hour of starting high frequency and adjust uh, the frequency based on the new results increasing frequency will decrease tidal volume and cause higher BACO2 decreasing frequency will increase tidal volume and causing lower BACO2 this is again different from conventional mechanical ventilation in conventional mechanical ventilation when you pay, your patient is having high co2 you want to wash out co2 so you increase the rate in conventional mechanical ventilation here the diff, uh, the the other way if you if the patient already having high co2 you want to wash out co2 you have to decrease the frequency not increase it may be required to be greater than uh, to be greater than six hertz to, re to reduce barotrauma because the usual frequencies of 3 to 6, which is the lowest, uh, 3 to 6 hertz might result in airway pressure volume that are potentially not lung protective. And this is important. For the power or the amplitude or delta pressure, it adjusts the piston displacement. Increasing delta pressure will increase tidal volume and that will decrease the BACO2. If your patient is having higher CO2, you have to increase the, you might increase the power. Starting with 90 centimeter of water, the range is 70 to 90 centimeter of water for adults. It should achieve chest wiggling or the visual vibration from shoulders to mid thigh area. It's better to keep the maximum and play. It's better to keep it in the maximum and play with the frequency to adjust PSO2. This is OCA trial protocol. So in in OCA trial protocol, they decided to keep the power on the maximum 90, let's say. And if your patient is having issue with the ventilation, CO2, you have to play with the frequency up and down. What about the other settings? We have the percent of the expiratory time. It should, uh, it's said to be 33 on the 3100P devices. It can be increased to improve CO2 removal. This is rarely done in the real life. What about the FiO2? We start with 100% to achieve target saturation. More than 88 to 90%. This is ERDS patient, remember and when we win the patient we have to win the fi2 first then we start winning the mean airway pressure available, devi available device in the real life we have two devices one is the sensor medex 3100b and this was used in the OCA trial uh, in the OCA trial the other trial we, uh, which is the oscar trial the, the english trial they use the japanese uh, device which is r100 or the other name is nova Lung vision alpha the other device is a little bit different. It's having the high frequency built in plus conventional mechanical ventilation. So you can shift the patient directly on the same device. It does not control the delta pressure. It controls tidal volume or stroke volume directly. Uh, and the comparison between these two devices is beyond the scope of this presentation. So this is the other device, which is the R100. This is two um, copy of it. I think the same is the Vision Alpha, and this is the R100. There is one technique we call it partial cuff leak. The reason we use it sometimes to eliminate CO2 to to improve CO2 removal. So we deflate the cuff a little bit, so that will cause this cuff is totally inflated. So here we deflate it a little bit, that will cause some leak around the cuff that will help us to eliminate CO2 in refractory hypercapnia on high frequency. How to do it, when to do it? It's recommended if the frequency of six hertz or, uh, or higher cannot be achieved, so the patient is still hypercapnic and you cannot achieve uh, set, uh, uh, hertz or frequency of six. How to do it? We start oral suctioning, we set the higher pressure alarm to 55 centimeter of water. We increase the bias flow until we reach mean, mean airway pressure of uh, increasing by 5. So if it's the baseline is already 30, we increase it up to 35. Then we, redu we reduce the inflation of the cuff slowly, gradually, until we decrease the mean airway pressure by 5. So back, it's back to its normal. After that, we return alarm li limits to previous setting. And that's the technique for doing this cuff leak. What about oxygenation management? When we start the high frequency, we'll do recruitment maneuver recommended to start it on the same machine. We apply mean error pressure of 40 seconds, uh, 40 seconds. Uh, we apply, sorry, a mean error pressure of 40 centimeter of water 
for around 40 to 60 seconds at that time we observe saturation and vitals for the patient if oxygenation worsened during high frequency we can in, uh, already the patient on 5 to 100 so we can increase the mean air pressure in increments of 3 to 5 every 30 uh, 30 minutes until we reach our target or we reach our maximum settings when FiO2 is uh, around 40 we can slowly gradually decreasing the mean air pressure by 2 to 3 cm of water every 4 to 6 hours until mean air pressure is in the 22 to 24 cm of water range which is the safe range at that point we can shift the patient to conventional ventilation what about ventilation uh, management? I mean CO2 and the BH. Uh, first, the, the goal of BH in this machine or these patients, ERDS, severe ERDS, is mild acidosis 7.25 to 7.35 at the highest possible frequency. This protocol, I just put it, copy based from the OCET uh, trial protocol. It's not evidence-based, but it's helpful in the real life. In general, we don't play with the delta pressure. We play with the frequency up and down based on the target PCO2. In refractory hypercapnia, if the patient is having severe acidosis, just double check for the partial obstruction or male position of the endo endotracheal tube. In this machine, we said that we decouple the oxygenation and ventilation. What does what does that mean? That the management of oxygenation is different than management of ventilation. Setting oxygenation, manipulating oxygenation should not affect ventilation and vice versa. In conventional mechanical ventilation, whenever we play with the oxygenation, it might affect ventilation. Beep, even if it's um, oxygenation issue, it might affecting ventilation and tidal volume. Even if it's a ventilation issue, it might affect oxygenation by play, by changing the mean air pressure. Here, the different, the totally different uh, issues. Oxygenation is different than ventilation. For oxygenation, we play with the mean air pressure, with the FiO2, with the alveolar recruitment and uh, alveolar recruit, recruitment maneuver. What about the ventilation? We can uh, manipulate it by the amplitude, the frequency, the hertz, the uh, percent of inspiratory time sometimes the cuff leak and we remember that these patients allowed to have permissive hypercapnia if you have refractory hypercapnia and you cannot control it this will be the last of my quick presentation about the settings of high frequency i will remind you that we talk about the basics last presentation first part and we are going to talk about the evidence review about this uh, mode of ventilation or this machine in next presentation thanks for watching please subscribe to this channel and goodbye